Hello, Instagram. How are you guys today? Hello, hello, hello. Let me wait for Facebook to load up here. Are we live? We are live on Facebook too. Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining me. I am Amy Raup of amyraup.com and I get to come to you every week and share whatever I need to share with you that week, but usually it's about how to live your best life, how to be healthy, how to be happy, how to balance your hormones, how to get pregnant, how to manage autoimmunity. I've been in the field of helping women and some men uh, achieve their, their best health, their reawakened health for 16 years. I am an acupuncturist and herbalist, and I'm also the author of several books. The one we're going to focus on today, well, we really are going to talk about two of them, but this is one, Yes, You Can Get Pregnant, and then my most recent book, which Facebook, you'll have to forgive me here for a second. I was using you as a um, prop, but that's okay. My most recent book is called Body Belief. And I'm going to talk to you about a case today, one of our stories of hope, we call them. So each month we post on our blog a story of hope, which is a woman that I've worked with uh, either virtually or in the clinic or who has been an e-course student of mine in my Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course, who has achieved the success of, of getting pregnant after she's been told maybe she can't get pregnant or her hormones were off. And... Uh, so this is something we we share these fairly regularly on our blog but from now on we're going to do one a month on these lives too so i can just talk through the case and i can answer any questions because i know a lot of you're going to relate and i want you to be able to have a space to ask me questions on what it is i think really was the game changer for the case and what helped this woman achieve in this case a dream pregnancy after the diagnosis of premature ovarian failure um Sheena, I'm reading that that book right now, and I love it so far. Just starting chapter five. Amazing. Is that body belief or yes, you can't get pregnant? Which one are you reading, Sheena? These are my home copies, and I get to, I have to get a new copy to show you guys live. I'm so sorry. This one has a big. This is actually um, my liver support juice, which is one of my favorite recipes from this book, and I spilled it all over the book. <laughs> So see it all in there on the liver support juice uh, page. But so, so we're going to do it. Let's talk about it. So if you're on my newsletter, you might have already read the story. I think redundancy is key, especially when we're trying to make adjustments in our own life. And hi, Amy, is POF the same as POA? Yes, it is. So premature ovarian failure or premature ovarian aging. Um, I think maybe if there was a spectrum, POA is a little better than POF because premature ovarian failure is basically like you're done for. There's no chance of you having children and premature ovarian aging. I, I believe in, yes, you can get pregnant. I use them interchangeably. And I want to just double check myself, but I do touch upon this specific challenge in yes you can get pregnant uh, autoimmune thyroid disease type 1 diabetes endometriosis poa um yeah so i think they're used interchangeably so let me define it for you though premature ovarian aging or premature ovarian failure um is when a woman has fsh levels above where they should be at her age or her anti-malarian hormone which is her amh levels are below where they should be Women with POA or POF often have no symptoms at all, um, but blood tests will reveal a very high FSH and a very low AMH, um, and antral follicle count is usually very low too, if, if any at all. So antral follicle count is when they do a sonogram and they look at your ovaries and they see how many follicles are in each ovary. Um, let's see. I was diagnosed with POF. Thanks so much for doing this. I'm 40 and still not giving up. Good. Well, so then you can do what Elizabeth did and change things around. And I have, I have a handful of girls at this point that I have helped reverse, um, premature ovarian failure. Uh, oh, wow. Thanks for the info. I was diagnosed with POA when I was 35, when I wanted to freeze my eggs. Yeah. So this is a similar story. She was only 32 years old. She was actually, um, just about to get married and they knew they wanted to start trying for children. She was in the medical field and she decided to go and get her hormones test. Now at this point she's menstruating regularly 
everything is is working fine in her body as far as she can tell and again she's a medical doctor so she's got a lot of training around this i thought my whole life i did everything right but now i know the universe has a plan for me um yes it does of course it does yes you can get pregnant tina i'm so glad you're reading that so i want to read to you some clinical notes so i have her case notes actually right here and this is this is something I get to go through, which is really fun. And so this is my old school way of keeping notes. Um, now I actually do do things digitally, but this case, so we found out she was 13 weeks pregnant in um, late February of 2019. So a little over a year ago. Um, and she came to me for the first time. So I'll read you the date. Um, she's 32 years old. 10 17 2018 and so this is what she writes in her paperwork um what is the main reason you are seeking treatment i hope to have a baby soon as i was told three weeks after my husband and i got married that i was in premature ovarian failure that was june 2017 and since that diagnosis i had i did not have a menstrual cycle for six months um and so her clinical information was I just want to read this to you so if you guys want to read the full story it was in my newsletter but we're also we'll link out to it um instagram you guys can just dm me for the link and facebook will put the link for the full story so you can go and read it yourself but she was diagnosed um sorry at the age of 30 um her fsh was 115 and her amh was 0.03 so um, she, again, had normal menstrual cycles until she got the diagnosis, which I think is something really important. Also why we highlighted this case for this month, because we were working off of the theme of uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. And, and I, I see that a lot where a woman gets a diagnosis and then the stress of that diagnosis causes significant changes in her health and her fertility and in her menstrual cycle. And so, so what this woman did again um you know we're all we're all like her very smart very sassy very resourceful was she went ahead and she bought my book right away she started following me on you know all the places instagram and facebook just like you guys she signed up for my yes you can get pregnant e-course which launches only once a year you can get in it when you coach with me or my associate um, at a discount. But other than that, you can't enter the e-course except for in September every year. So we, we do a big launch every year for my e-course, uh, you know, 15 hour course. I do office hours every single week. I go live and I answer questions and I, I just got off of office hours and it was a very inspirational one where I was just cheering all my girls on, you know, about why they're here and what the power they have to do. But so Elizabeth really took the balls by, you know, she, she really got the, I would say she took back the reins. So she definitely had PTSD. So this is what she says to me in our initial um, conversation. Um, so she lost her periods after the diagnosis for six months. She got my book. She started following a lot of the recommendations in Yes, You Can Get Pregnant. She also enlisted a fertility mindset coach. Her name is Roseanne Austin. Um, and I give Roseanne props to in the, in the um, blog post that I wrote about this. And she was able to start to shift her mindset into a place of believing that she could turn things around, that she's got this. That was her mentality. I got this. I got this. And so that actually helped her start to regulate her cycles again. So as she got out of the stress and the trauma of the diagnosis, her periods resumed. And I have a whole timeline that I'll go through with you guys. Um, so by January of 2018, so she gets the diagnosis in um, uh, June 2017, right? So she's kind of frozen, paranoid about everything when she finds out June 2017. Then she, you know, six months, she loses her period. So January, the start of the new year, she enlists, um, I'm sorry, I'm screwing it up. She gets a diagnosis in June. October, she enlists the fertility mindset coach. By January, she then also starts acupuncture, 
mind abdominal massage. She starts reading my book in January. And in September, she joins my e-course. So she gets a diagnosis in June. October, she starts with the mindset stuff. January, she starts acupuncture, mind abdominal massage. She reads my book. And then in September, so nine months later, she, she enrolls in the Yes, You Can Get Pregnant e-course. Because at this point now, she's reestablished a period, but she's still not getting pregnant, right? So... By the time she starts the e-course in September, she had had two fairly regular menstrual cycles and something she hadn't had in over a year. And that was all thanks to what she called her bump squad. So her bump squad was Roseanne, it was her acupuncturist, it was her mind ma abdominal massage therapist, and it was me. Um, and so her first call with me was, like I said, in October of 2018. So basically a year, and, almost a year and a half after the diagnosis. And, you know, at this point, um, she sees signs and symptoms of ovulation. They try to conceive every single month. She works crazy hours. Um, she has breakouts. She has acne. She gets a lot of bloating, breast tenderness. Um, her period is not too heavy. It's kind of light. So we're going to work on that. It was bright red, though, and no clots. I thought that was good. Um, she had some brownish spotting at the end. Um, she also then tells me she has a diagnosis of ulcerative colitis, which makes me think right away another autoimmune condition. Okay, so this might be autoimmune. And, and I'll say that, especially to those younger women that get the diagnosis of premature ovarian failure or premature ovarian aging, a lot of times there's an autoimmune component to that. So that basically means that the body starts attacking itself. And in this case, it'll attack the ovaries and it'll shut them down and it'll compromise ovarian function, which will increase FSH and decrease AMH. So she has normal bowel movements every day, but she's bloated all day long. Sometimes she gets mucus and blood in her stool. She's miserable. Um, no matter what she eats, this happens, she says. Um, so I talked to her about maybe that she had SIBO. As a medical doctor, she was kind of on the fence of like, is SIBO real? She talked to some of her GI friends. They all poo-pooed the idea of her getting tested for SIBO or any major dietary changes. I still tried to push on my front because at this point, she's pretty much following the yes, you can get pregnant diet, which is mainly, you know, I'll sum it up, gluten, dairy, soy free, lots of fat, animal protein, lots of vegetables, but I still allow some grains and nuts and seeds and, you know, uh, nightshades and things of that nature. The autoimmune diet that I like to use for girls of this case or endometriosis, polycystic, or anybody, habitual miscarriages, anybody that's got a really stubborn fertility case, I usually upgrade them to this diet, which is a bit stricter. She was not game to do that with me at that point. So, okay, I had to work with what I had, right? Um, educated woman, she's done a ton of things and, you know, was, you know, did join the e-course. So I figured, okay, we got time. She can, she can dive into all the modules. Again, I have 15 hours of information in that e-course, you know, maybe 16 at this point, plus the weekly office hours. So she's, she's got a lot of information to digest and take in. Plus she's got five coaching sessions with me. So, um, she also then tells me she's gained all this weight. She went from 115 pounds to 145 pounds in a couple of months. So that's another thing with this, this premature ovarian failure, like the body literally went into this shutdown mode. Um, and for her, she said, I'm, I'm definitely overweight. Like, you know, her BMI was higher than it should be. Uh, maybe 115 was too skinny for her, but you know, so even if we could get her to cut down like 15, 20 pounds, I think she'd be in a more, more fertile range. Um, her sex drive was good. Her sleep was okay. She didn't have a very consistent sleep schedule, which is another thing I really tried to work with her on, but she had one of those erratic work schedules. Um, her energy was pretty good. Um, her, she had a transvaginal ultrasound about six months prior to look at her ovaries and they couldn't see them, but behind all the gas in her colon, like the, the, um, the ulcerative colitis was really, uh, making it hard to see her ovaries, but they said her uterus looked healthy. How's your relationship? She said it was strained, but they're working through it. She went through a lot of trauma. Once she got the diagnosis, she thought maybe he wasn't gonna wanna remain married to her. So that was another big part of her stress of like, I never knew this was gonna be a thing that we maybe couldn't have children. So it was very, 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 as you can imagine, stressful for her. Um, so she was doing exercise. The mindset was, you know, she felt really rock solid on that part. 
Um, I recommended maybe cutting out nuts. I wanted to see if nuts were having an impact on her digestion. Um, vitamin D was also really low. Her thyroid um, had been checked, her homocysteine um, and mercury. So I put her on my supplement regimen, which is you know covered in my book and kind of anywhere on my site. You guys can see all my recommended supplements on my website. Um, but mainly we did vitamin D, we did spirulina, we did cod liver oil, we did methylfolate, we did liver capsules, um, and I made sure she was getting in bone broth at least five times a week. And that's kind of where we had it. Then our next coaching call, I'll just get into these notes quickly with you and then we'll go back to this. Um, she met with an endocrinologist, um, her TSH was a little high. Previous doctors told her it wasn't that big of a deal, but I flagged it because it was creeping up. It went from a 2.6 to a 3.3. And I was like, that's not a healthy fertile range for a TSH. TSH needs to be ideally between one and two, max 2.5. And you can be a little under one, but you really don't wanna be over 2.5 and ideally at a two. So I urged some supplementation with thyroid medication. Considering it was interesting because she was a doctor and she was very against medication and you know I think she felt like what if what if this means that something's really wrong with me? I don't want to give in she's worked so hard on the mindset piece and I just said but what if it supports you? What if it supports you getting to that baby and that really is you know my recommendation a lot of the times is you know the the pros versus the cons and now remember her FSH was 115 her AMH was 0 0.03 she's now reestablished a menstrual cycle but she's still not getting pregnant and she's really only had a couple periods at this point so to find out that her TSH was elevated I think was critical to to support that um, this happens to me currently on level thyroxine to lower my TSH. Yeah, TSH is, is critical to pregnancy. It needs to be in a healthy range between a one and a two. That's the functional range. A lot of doctors won't flag it until it's at a three or a four. And, and it's really hard to get pregnant when your TSH is that high. You need to do a complete thyroid panel though too and look at thyroid antibodies and free T3 and free T4. And they all should be in the functional range, not the um, lab range. So she was doing her acupuncture, but she said it was so busy. Her mind is just so busy. It was hard for her to slow down. Um, I asked her to cut out nuts and nightshades. And so she was kind of half doing it. Um, we had a big conversation about being more flexible with herself because so much of this, even though she's done so much of the mindset work, so much of this was, um, there was a lot of control going on. Um, so what defines premature before 40, 35? So the, the premature diagnosis is just an FSH higher than it should be at your age and an AMH higher, lower than it should be at your age. But typically it's very high a FSH and very low AMH. So in this case, her FSH was 115 and her AMH was a 0 0.03. Those are significantly out of range for even a woman in her late 40s, you know. Um, so, and this woman was only 30 when she got this diagnosis. Um, okay, okay, then just hearing questions. Um, and then, so Danny, this happened to me. So, so basically, so now she's in the e-course where, and we're coaching together. Um, so she had said to me, do you think there's hope? I want you to tell me every single thing I need to do to fix this problem. Um, so my plan for her, like I went into with you guys, was the red flags in her case, like the bloating, the acne, the depression, the anxiety, the low libido, the weight gain. So if you guys are new to me, that's how I work. I always say fertility is an extension of health. And fertility is basically an abundance. You have chi and blood from a Chinese medicine perspective. You just have so much to give up that your body's like, yeah, and then I'm going to go make this human. And so we look at all what I call the red flags or the kinks in your system. And we need to fix those so that your body is optimally functioning. And then your fertility thrives as an extension of that. So to me, the red flags, the bloating, the acne, the depression, the weight gain, that's telling me right there that her body is not getting all the nutrition it needs because it's not functioning optimally, especially the, the digestive issues. Those are huge to me. I always go after fixing digestive issues first because that tells me you're not absorbing the food from your diet. And so the cells in your body can't get healthier 
we can improve egg quality, we can improve the lining of the uterus, we're, we're going to be compromised and, and we're going to make a compromised human if we make one, you know, so uh, I want digestion. I want you absorbing all of your nutrition. I want good, healthy bowel movements every single day. I want you to wake up feeling refreshed in the morning. I want your emotions to be evenly felt. There's times for anxiety and depression. There's times for anger. There's time for sadness. There's also times for joy and excitement and a lust for life, right? And you should have a sex drive, especially with, you know, you're an ovulating, menstruating woman. You should have a sex drive. You should want to have sex. Sex shouldn't hurt. It shouldn't be painful. You shouldn't have vaginal dryness, right? So all these things are like, I need to fix some stuff. So as I said, she was mainly following the yes, you can get pregnant diet, but not being super strict. So I urged her to follow it more strictly. Plus remove nightshade vegetables and nuts. Cause I could see she was eating a lot of these two foods. And as I said, she had that diagnosis of this di diagnosis of ulcerative colitis, which falls into an autoimmune condition and nightshades and nuts are known to aggravate autoimmunity because of the, the, well, I won't get into it. Just leave it at that. Um, so I also wanted her to get further blood testing, but she was so scarred by the medical team, she was resistant. I pushed her to at least get thyroid and vitamin D tested. She did it. Her TSH came back high and her D came back very low. So I recommended increase vitamin D right away and get on thyroid medication. She resisted the idea of going on any medication. I finally convinced her. I said, for the sake of your fertility, I strongly urge you to do so. So remind you, this is October. So she joins my e-course in September, October, November. We get the testing done. We're getting her on medication. Over the following few months, Elizabeth finally stuck to the diet and the new supplements as well as the thyroid medication. She didn't see as many shifts in her red flags as I had expected. Her period didn't fully regulate, nor did her bloating completely go away. But she was feeling more like herself. And she was losing weight. And our regular coaching sessions continued to keep her mindset um, in a peaceful place as she was learning to have more fun. So in January, so every year in the new year, I do what's called my fertility reboot or my reboot and rewire program, which is a third 30 day mind body reset. And we basically follow the diet from body belief. And so my e-course students usually get a significant discount to, to join that course and it's open to the public as well. But so a lot of my e-course girls do that program because it's really fun. They all do it together as a team and it's super exciting. So Elizabeth took part in that January. And so again, she was following the diet for the most part, but not being as strict as I wanted her to be. And she wasn't seeing all the changes I wanted to see in the red flags. And obviously at this point, she's still not pregnant. So she does the reboot and rewire program, 30 day mind body transformation. And she, um, I don't hear from her for like, I don't know. She does the program, I think it's early January. So February, I hadn't heard from her. February, we check in um, and, you know, she's early Feb. I think we check in and she's doing okay. She, she you know, her period had um, just come and she, I guess she was ovulating. And on February 15th, I woke up in, oh, on February 15th, I woke up in the morning and realized I hadn't heard from Elizabeth. Um, so I sent her a quick email checking in on her. So I, yeah, I guess I checked in on her late January because she had just gotten a period. And then I realized I hadn't heard from her in Feb. Um, and you know, we're actively coaching and I'm the girls that I personally coach with too. I'm just always checking in on if, if, you know, we still have sessions left or even if we're done with our sessions, you're just, you're part of my life and, and I'm on your team. And so if I don't hear from you, I check in on you. That's how I do it. That's how I roll. Um, and she hadn't been that active in the e-course group either, but she was busy and it was the new year and all that stuff. So she sends me an email back, Amy, it's so nice of you to reach out. I was actually going to email you this weekend after I surprised my husband tonight on our Valentine's day dinner, we are about eight weeks pregnant. So I think because of the irregularity of her period, even though it came in January, um, she, she didn't test right away. Cause she thought, oh, my period's just acting funny. I'm, you know, I can't be pregnant. There's just no way. So, you know, she tells me all the things. I'm still in shock. I was super nauseous and I had the food aversions, but I blamed it on my work schedule. You know, I finally took a test after my seven day work stress, uh, stretch and it ended up being a positive. Um, when I got to the ultrasound next day, I saw the baby fluttering heart rate. Um, 
So based on the dates, the baby is a Christmas miracle, which I think is really interesting because she did the reboot and rewire with us like the following week, right? Um, P.S. Thank you so much for pushing me. I'm so glad I got over being on the thyroid medication medication and just took it. It's been quite a roller coaster with being told you are essentially in menopause and need a donor egg to get naturally pregnant so quickly. We only have been married one and a half years and still in awe how quickly things came together. The bump scott was key. So to go over it again, June 2017. Oh, I just got tears. I know it's so good, right? It's such a good story. So yeah, that baby is now, um, gosh, so... I think just about a year, nine months. Um, so June 2017, she gets the diagnosis of premature ovarian failure, IFSH of 115, AMH of 0.03. So, and unfortunately for all of you guys, we don't get those numbers tested again because she gets so scarred by the situation. She never wants to know what FSH and AMH is again. All she cared about was she wanted to restore a normal, healthy menstrual cycle, work on her mindset, heal from the trauma. But obviously those numbers had to have come down FSH and AMH up in order for her to start ovulating healthily and, and having fairly regular menstrual cycles. And then also creating a healthy baby because high FSH levels are just not going to create a very healthy embryo. You know, so we got it. We got to get meaning 115, you know, FSH, but FSH also, I think another thing and AMH turns around all the time it changes month to month i just had a call yesterday with one of my clients who is 45 and she said to me and we're trying for baby number three she's done some fertility treatments for one and two just iuis but still fertility treatments needed assistance she said to me uh, amy i just got my amh tested uh it's higher now than it was before my second child which she had her second child in 2017 and her amh was 0.42 and now at 45 her amh is 0.53 and that's that's this that's the e-course that's the coaching that's the diet that's the lifestyle that's the mindset so again june 2017 she gets this diagnosis high fsh low amh october she begins forming her bump squad with the mindset coaching then she adds an acupuncture mayan massage chinese herbs all of which you know i can't do acupuncture virtually but chinese herbs um i can definitely help with and acupuncture in my and if you're not local to me we get you someone set up with that then march she starts reading um yes you can get pregnant she starts following that diet so she basically starts following my protocol in march and then she starts she gets regular menstrual cycles in july and august she joins the e-course in september then i i further navigate her diet her vitamin D, her thyroid support, convince her to go to the doctor and get some blood work done. Um, October, we start privately working together. January, she's naturally pregnant. Um, and at this point, because this post was written uh, last year, she has a, a healthy one-year-old at home or about one-year-old. So if you guys want to read the full post, just head over to amyralph.com slash POF for premature ovarian failure. Um, I also have, if you guys want to just get started on, you know, the stuff that I recommend in this book, especially I have my fertility starter kit, which is free for all of you. So Instagram, just private message us. Facebook, we'll post it in the comments at the end where to get that free starter kit. But just so you know, I mean, this is, this is basically what worked for her and the private coaching, maybe that's in your budget. Maybe it's not, you know, I'll say this, you are worth it. Um, and I do think that was the clincher because when I get to work one-on-one -on -one or my fertility coaching associate gets to work one-on-one -on -one with you, we get to look at every little bit of the case and then figure out exactly what you need for you. Um, I love these stories, give a lot of hope. However, I still struggle with thinking I'll be on the other side of things. And that is hard. That is hard and it's a daily struggle and it's daily work to help with the mindset piece. But I think that that's why I bring you these stories, because I, I hope that you see a little bit um, of you in some of these stories and then you take things away. Do you take clients from Canada? I take clients from all over the world. I work with women everywhere in the world right now. I think we've act, we've definitely hit every continent at this point, probably every country at this point. So, yes, anywhere you are, we take you and we make it work. Um, I was on a call this morning with a woman in Hong Kong and it was 9.30 p.m. her time and 9.30 a.m. my time. So yes, um, I have clients in Abu Dhabi, I mean, all over. Uh, I find that 
one of the biggest struggles when trying to conceive is to try to get my Western doctors on board with my Eastern doctors. Yeah. And I think another side to that though, is like, know what they're good at, like take them for what they are. Do you know what I mean? Um, like, you know, when I'm on a team, it's like, okay, Amy is my person for X, Y, and Z. She's my person for food and egg quality, nutrition, mindset, my Western doc, you know, she's the person or he's the person for running my blood work and supporting me here. And, and sometimes they want to intermingle and sometimes they don't. And that's okay too. I think you just go in with like, this person's good at this and this person's good at this and, and who they are on their team. Um, how about more working with men with low morphology? Yes, we do do a lot of work with men, uh, very similarly, mindset, lifestyle, diet. Um, I just did a whole Instagram live uh, maybe two weeks ago on sperm health. So go back and check that out. Um, a lot of really good information in there that you can that you can use to help improve sperm health. Can you talk about Maya massage? When should you get it in your cycle? Is it helpful? Um, I love it. I personally do it. I, I do it at least once, maybe twice a month. Um, and I usually recommend it before you ovulate to really help with ovulation. But it's also great for menstrual pain, cramping, clotting, if the uterus is tilted or mispositioned, pain with sex, things of that nature. It can be really powerful. And I do it in conjunction with castor oil packs. I think castor oil packs are also really great at improving circulation and blood flow to the ovaries and the uterus. And a side note, when you improve circulation and blood flow to the ovaries and the uterus, guess what improves? Your AMH level. Do you help women who have had a miscarriage due to trisomy 21? I've had a lot of women have miscarriages and for genetic or chromosomal reasons. And yes, I have. Um, you know, we usually will focus on, I mean, it depends. Uh, the statistic is about 18 to 20% of all women will have a miscarriage regardless of their age. Um, trisomy 21 does increase a little bit the risks as you get older. Um, but sometimes it's just bad luck. I'll say that, but we still have to work through that trauma and that fear. Um, you know, having had a miscarriage myself, I, I know the road it is, and it's, it's challenging to get over that sadness and that grief. And so I do a lot of work with that, but then absolutely we come in with supplements and diet and lifestyle, all the things to do that we know can improve our epigenetics, which really impact our genetic presentation. Um, let me just see questions are just piling in in the middle of a low stim ivf cycle my estrogen has dropped do you have anything or resources you'd recommend to help with this um you know i am a big fan of like bone broth and beets and lots of leafy green vegetables hot water bottles uh, maybe even castor oil packs to really just try to get healthy circulation and blood flow um but it could have just been that you know i mean are our follicles still developing and they just kind of paused you could also if the doctor's open to it and you're open to it estrogen patches can help as well i'll do um acupuncture with electrical stimulation i'll do chinese herbs so there's a lot of different things that i'll do i just would need to know you know your case specifically you could do um you know a, a one-off coaching call with my fertility associate michelle uh, all the information is on my website amyrop.com and then I, I could give more information on the case. How about low egg reserve? So that's what this whole talk was about because she was in premature ovarian failure. So basically she had no egg reserve and we reversed it and she has a healthy baby now. We work with low egg reserve all the time. It's probably the most common thing we hear, a high FSH, low AMH. Um, are you still coaching clients? I am uh, and my associate Michelle is as well. And Michelle and I meet twice a week to go over cases. We talk about every single case she sees. I read the notes, I have information, I give feedback. So even if you don't coach with me, um, you coach with Michelle and you get me on your case. Um, so blood clots and periods since forever, any advice please? Um, read my book and follow everything I got in here. Um, I would, it would start with, yes, you can get pregnant for any menstrual irregularities, castor oil packs, acupuncture, Chinese herbs, changing your diet and your lifestyle, big things for, for menstrual issues. Um, I'm going to take this last question and then I'm going to go. But I love these questions, guys. Um, I've had two miscarriages and no live births. Just did a miscarriage panel. Everything came back optimal since my miscarriages. Now I have painful ovulations, dry mouth during ovulation, any help. I would also um, look into autoimmune conditions. Make sure you don't have Hashimoto's. Um, there's a book called Is My Body Baby Friendly? I'd start there. And then I'd also, the miscarriage, the thing that helps the most with the miscarriage girls is following this book to a T, especially the diet. 
Um, this is the autoimmune paleo protocol mixed with some Chinese medicine. Um, but all my habitual miscarriage cases, this is where I go and it helps significantly. You might have endometriosis, which is causing the miscarriages as well. And you don't have any clotting factor issues, but you might have other issues that are causing it. You could also look into endometriitis where you go and you get a uterine biopsy and they rule out any infection, sorry, endometritis, and they rule out any infection in your uterus. It's another thing I would do. Um, okay. What is your opinion on HRT to lower FSH to increase chances of pregnancy? Sure. I've seen clinics that I like, mainly um, Generation Next, Dr. Janelle Luke, and, and New Hope in New York City, where they'll use low-dose birth control pill to lower FSH, which will then allow you to stim better and get better, get some eggs out, and then hopefully get pregnant that way. It does lower FSH, but you can also lower FSH through other means. You know, it might take a little longer through diet and lifestyle, but FSH comes from the brain, and it's like the hypothalamus pituitary ovarian and adrenal axis. It, it, there's a lot you can do to regulate that, which will then also regulate FSH. Like in this case, in Elizabeth's case, I mean, we completely regulated that that cycle um, all through mindset, diet, lifestyle recommendations, and her FSH came way down enough for her to get pregnant naturally. Um, you guys are so welcome. Thank you for being here. So again, free fertility starter kit. Instagram, just private message us. Um, if you want more information on coaching with me or my team, head over to amyrop.com and you'll see all the information. My recommended supplements are on that page. Uh, Facebook, we posted the free fertility starter kit right here. And if you want to read this story in detail and all my other stories of hope, because we have a whole section on my blog of stories of hope. There's probably, I think, 20 different stories up there and we're, we're getting better at putting some more out. Um, I have so many. In fact, today I'm going to go through all these cases and start putting pulling more stories of hope for you guys um but yeah head over to my website amyrop.com and then also instagram just private messages ask us any questions we're here for you facebook same thing we're here for you guys and there's a lot of good free stuff on my website to help you jump start this fertility process check out my books i mean this is a best-selling fertility book and has been for five years for a reason because it works okay all right, guys, I'll see you next week. I love you. Um, I'm going to go because I got to go pick up my little person from school. Love you guys. Such a good talk. <laughs>